Okay, so welcome to the cross-examination lecture. My name is Teresa and I'm the education manager at ISSDA. So if you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself or you can just pop them in the chat. But just in case I don't see them, you can unmute yourself too. So first, what is public forum? So it's a format or style of debate and where there's a teams of two opposing each other, debating a topic concerning a current event. So over here, there's like a format. So first is team A, speaker one, with the opening statement of four minutes, and then TB, speaker one with four minutes as well. And then it's crossfire, and then it's rebuttal, which is like the attacking speech, and then another crossfire, and then summary, and then grand cross, and then the final one. The format named it differently, but it's also called final focus as well. So that's basically just about public forum and its format. And you don't have to memorize it. You can always like keep a sheet like this next to you when you're in the debate round in case you forget the timings. So first, what even is cross-examination? So cross-ex is the period of questioning between a pro side, which is a side that agrees with the topic, and a con side, which is a side that disagrees with the topic. After the opening speeches, so that's two minutes, and then after rebuttals with another two minute cross, and then after summaries, which is a three minute cross. So all together, there's three cross examinations. And the reason the last one is three minutes instead of two is because the last one is grand cross with over with four people. So like everyone participating. And I'll touch more on that later. So now that we know what cross X is, we need to now know the purpose, like why do we have it? What do we do in it? Why is it important? So there's three things you should do in cross X. The first is clarification. Clarification basically is where you try to understand the arguments and make sure you got everything down. Because in debate, some people can talk really, really fast and it's okay if you miss something, just make sure you ask about it. So for example, if they're talking and you completely miss the second contention, you can ask about it. Can you please clarify the tagline every second contention? Yeah, sure. And they can tell you. Or what was your impact on a third point again? And then they can tell you that. So if you miss anything or are unsure about anything, make sure to ask. Also understand their links and their impacts. So if they have an impact, an impact is basically who's impacted, why is this argument important? So if they're talking about their argument and you don't understand it, you can ask questions about it to help you understand it. Because of course, you can't really debate a topic or debate something your opponent said if you don't know what they just said. So make sure you clarify anything you don't understand. The second thing you do in cross-examination is point out contradictions. So sometimes in debate, we contradict ourselves. Contradicting is basically where we say one thing, but then later say the complete opposite thing. So if your opponent does that, make sure to point it out in cross -ex or you can save it to rebuttal to point it out, it's your choice. So here's an example of a contradiction. Let's say your opponent is saying that this new law is going to cause starvation. But then in their third point, they say that people under the law will not starve because they can get their food through the black market. Wait a minute, that makes no sense. Are people starving or are they not? You can point that out and cross, you can say, so which one is it? Are people starving or are they not? And then they have to say it on a spot and they have to answer you. Also, if in the beginning of their speech, they are saying that lives are number one and the most important, but then later they say the most important thing is long-term and economic growth. That doesn't make sense either. They just contradicted themselves. So you can also point that out and ask them about it. And a third and final thing is confession, getting them to admit something. So of course, if we all went to our debate opponents right now and said, do you think I'm right? They're gonna say no. If you say, am I right? They're probably not gonna agree with you at all. So basically what you do is you try to like make your questions like a little sneaky, get them to confess without outright making it look like you're trying to trip them up. So for example, you can say, what is more important, human life or money? Of course your opponent's gonna say human life, right? And then later in maybe like a rebuttal speech, which is the attack speech, you can say, judge, my opponent even admitted in cross X that human life is more important, which is why we're gonna buy our argument, 
which saves lives versus their argument on saving money. So from your opponent's own words, you can use it against them. So that way, those are three things that you can do in cross. Number one, clarify. Number two, point out contradictions. Number three, get your opponent to confess. So now that we know what cross is for, here's what cross is not for. You're not supposed to read new evidence or introduce new facts. This is a, a questioning. It's cross X or cross examination or cross, cross questioning. It's not cross stating. It's not your time to like state it like a monologue and just like give a whole new speech. It's time to ask your opponent questions. So try not to like just read new evidence. Like say, are you aware in New York Times 2015 that they said blah, blah, of course, they're not going to know that. That's too specific. They're going to be like, actually, we have our own evidence, and they're going to start reading this, like reading their own evidence. So that doesn't really help you at all. And also, try to get something from your opponent, not from yourself. You, of course, know your own evidence and your own facts. Try to get your opponent to mess up and your opponent to confess. Don't try to just state facts the whole time. And also, try not to create chaos, because sometimes you, in cross, people talk over each other, people can be too aggressive. And sometimes people don't let the other person ask a question, they dominate too much. Make sure that you have respect for the other person and are being rude and are being polite. And also don't ask questions about evidence you have, which I brought up just earlier. And also don't answer your own question because that doesn't, cross the X is for your opponent to answer questions and for your opponent to give information not for you to answer questions that you already know the answer to. Because there's no point in asking a question and it being answered by you. Every question has to have a purpose. So for example, if you're in cross X and you're asking your opponent, what is the rate of pregnancy in the United States? It's going up, right? It's, it's currently going up. And then you just start talking. You answer your own question. There's no reason why you just ask that. So a better way is to let your opponent answer. What's the general rate of pregnancy in the US right now? And then they'll say it's going up. Okay, so it's going up. So that's more effective because now it's using your opponent's words. So don't answer your own question, let your opponent answer the question. So now let's learn about how to get more speaker points during cross X. Speaker points are also called style points in some debate formats. And those, these in public forum are out of 30 and judges can take away points or add more points based on like how you speak and your overall just debating in a round. And remember that the judge is the audience. You're never gonna be able to convince your opponent because your opponent has been assigned to that side. They're not switching up unless they do it by accident. The real person determining the round and who you wanna sway is a judge. So make sure you're trying to persuade the judge and also be genuine. Questions should sound like questions, not just claims. And also be yourself, like be you, let your personality show and show your debate style and sound confident and calm, not aggressive or scared. So that means not really trying to stutter or talking over, like just like acting really nervous, not really sure what question you're trying to ask and like flipping around your pages, trying to look for a question that shows like you're not prepared and you don't know what you're doing. And you want to try to sound confident and calm so that the judge gets a sense that you are prepared and you know what you're saying and you know the topic. Also have decorum. Don't be accusatory and don't make statements. Don't be rude to the other person, be polite. If the judge is seeing that one person is talking over the other and being aggressive, but then another person is being really polite, letting the other person talk, letting the other person ask questions, and just being really good, have a good decorum, the judge is probably gonna get more points to the other person, not to the person that's being aggressive. So make sure you are that person that's being good, having good decorum. And also display confidence. This is really important. Fake it until you make it, because I know in debate rounds, we get really, really nervous because it can be intimidating asking someone questions, but make sure you show that you're confident, you know what you're doing, and some people think that in order to be confident, you have to get louder, you have to get angrier. That's not the case. That does not mean that, all, mean that at all. Aggression is actually a lack of confidence. So try not to get aggressive or loud, be assertive, be calm, 
and have facial expressions too. Because judges usually don't really flow during cross. Some judges do, but a lot of judges don't. So the judge is looking at you, giving you their full undivided attention. So this is your time to really show like your debate style, really show your confidence, show that you're prepared and also get them engaged. So that means like maybe gestures, facial expressions, and also just being calm in general. So now let's go more to specific with specific crossfires. The very first crossfire is after the opening statements. So you just heard a bunch of people say a bunch of arguments and contentions. You're probably going to need to clarify. You probably missed something or you're probably like, wait, did they say that? I'm kind of unsure. So make sure you clarify if necessary. Also lay the foundation for your rebuttal speech because after cross rebuttal is going to happen. So make sure you get the confessions you need for that, get everything you need for it. For example, if you know it's crucial for your rebuttal that you're able to turn over a certain point, make sure that you ask about that point and cross and also work together with your partner about it. Ask your partner, hey, what do you need? What do you need before our cross? What do you want me to clarify and cross before they deliver the rebuttal? So you can also take prep time for cross as well. And also try to come to a framework agreement is similar. A framework agreement is basically like what your case like surrounds around. So for example, let's say the topic is about social media and you say that the framework of the round is that elected politicians is the most crucial way to promote democracy. And you ask your opponent, would you agree that the most efficient way to promote democracy is blah, 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 blah. And they say, yes. So then you can say it in rebuttal. So both sides have agreed to this. So that then you can prove how you help that point more. So that way, like it helps the judge like agree with you more because if you say that both sides agree to something, but you help that point more, that makes you more likely to win because like you're like proving your side better to be than your opponents. So these are all the things you do in cross just like you try to make sure you understand all the arguments your opponents just said. And the second cross is really similar, clarifying necessary, and also look for contradictions in rebuttal speeches. So if the rebuttal speaker said something that contradicted the opening speaker, for example, if one speaker says money is important, but then the other speaker said human lives is the most important, that's a contradiction right there. And once again, you can try a common framework agreement here if you forgot to do it the first one. And also, well, concessions clear up the round, establish a clash. So there's like a clash in the round, for example, human life. You can try to establish that and be like, would you agree that a major clash in today's round will be blah, 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 blah. And then you can prove why you win that clash in later speeches. So then the final crossfire is probably the hardest and most interesting to watch because all four debaters need to talk and participate. One person can't be carrying and the other person asks only one question. Both people need to participate. And it's hard sometimes with four people, especially on Zoom. Sometimes we talk over each other. Make sure you don't do that because you can't really hear people if you do that. And also it's rude. So make sure you let other people speak and also make sure you and your opponent, like make sure you and your partner are working together with teamwork to make sure you're asking all your questions before your final focus. Keep it respectful. That's like also not just for cross, but like through the whole debate, be respectful. Also use weighing mechanisms. Weighing is saying, weighing is basically when you say your argument is more important than someone else's argument. So you can weigh to show importance and also show final contradictions. Like if your opponent contradicts your, themselves again, you can point that, that, point that out and ask about it. Basically just point out anything you have to you need to get clarified before the last speech. So now that we know about all the three crosses, which are all, all pretty similar, let me, let, we're gonna watch an example because I feel like with examples, you can understand things better. So this is from an, I think a, one of the semifinal rounds from NSDA in 2021. So let me pull up the video. Okay, let me just go to the time. So this is the first cross X right after the opening statements. 
Let me know if you can hear it or if the sound isn't working. Let me clear up a few taglines. So your contention to tagline is what exactly? Distrust. So right there, he's asking a clarifying question. What was your tagline again? And now she's going to answer that. Democracy and government. Okay, distrust. Gotcha. And then your three um, impact links to that were misinformation, right? Fake news and foreign interference. Yeah, I guess the second one we labeled as clicks, but yours worked as well. Okay, awesome. Um, can I ask one more? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so when polarization happens, right, are you, do you have any data that indicates that polarization was not as big of a deal before social media? Yeah, definitely. In 1994, the graph of polarization looked like this, where Democrats and Republicans agreed on a lot of issues. In 2020, it looks more like this, and we would say this is because of the increase in social media that's increasing misinformation and increasing echo chambers. Can I take the question? Yeah. Perfect. So, so that's usually how you go about and cross. You answer your opponent's question, and then you say, can I have a question? So that way there's an even balance of questions. What is the point of voting? Isn't it to create policies that people support? So right now she's trying to get a confession out of him. I say so, yes. Perfect. You can take a question. Um, yeah, let's see. Actually, you can have another one. I don't have one. Thank you. So when was Bernie Sanders first voted into office? So right there, she's asking a question. And this is really similar to my pregnancy example. Notice how she's not answering her own question and she's letting the opponent answer it. Um, I'm not actually sure on the date for that. It's 1989. So is Bernie Sanders a political newcomer? Oh, here. I see where you're going with this. Here, I'll, I'll clear up the argument, the warranting, rather. So the whole Bernie Sanders example, right, isn't specifically just to show newcomers, right? That's our Warren 17 evidence, which is a separate warrant. But Bernie Sanders specifically was just an example to show why a platform that's social media centered can still lead to a lot of popularity, even if, like, mainstream news corporations don't necessarily like the candidate. Like, we would argue that he didn't receive as much publicity as, like, candidates like Biden and Trump. But he still had like a chance and like he still built a following and that's what's important. But that also happened before social media, right? So like Bernie was already a really popular figure in the very liberal movement in the United States before mm -hmm. social media even existed. Yeah, and one thing I want to make clear is that Bernie isn't necessary for the argument to actually exist. If you don't want to, if you don't think Bernie is a valid candidate, as an example, that's totally fine. That's just an example. The whole argument is suppo just supposed to say that platforms can exist where uh, their voters and their politicians are a lot closer together than like if it's just on Fox News or CNN, right? Um, can I have a question? Go ahead. So let's talk about misinformation, right? So why is it that misinformation is only an issue on social media and not in public and not in or, excuse me, not an issue in public discourse outside of social media? So I think a few things. Firstly, anyone can post on social media and it reaches up to 70% faster because your friends retweet it and they retweet it and it happens again and again and again, which isn't possible in person. And then secondly, I would say that social media has less checkback and fewer editorial standards than, for example, established news sources. And thirdly, misinformation is especially bad on social media because all these comments and posts are very short. They're like one to two sentences. That creates a lot of unnuanced discussion, a lot of miscommunication, and a lot more aggression on social media that isn't possible. Okay. So that basically, okay. Oh my goodness, sorry about that. My camera wasn't on. For some reason my camera turned off when I was screen sharing, sorry about that. <laughs> but anyways, that was the video from NSDA. And you can see how the speaker that was wearing the pink she was very confident and she was like assertive and she was very polite. Can I have another question? Yeah, sure. But also if your opponent asked for like too many questions and they had like three, you can say, you can ask one right after I do and you can go into your question if it's really necessary. And yeah, that's basically it. Does anyone have any questions? I'm going to take that as a no, but if anyone has any questions about debate in general, not just cross-examination, you can put it in the general chat of the Discord server, or you can PM me on Discord as well. And thank you everyone for coming to this lecture and giving up your time. I'm so sorry about my camera. I didn't know it was off. <laughs>